Good evening. I'm Stacy Amos, and these are the top stories we have for you tonight. Rumors surrounding Havenza closing mid-year 2012. Elena Christian Junior High gets a big boost from Havenza today and your weekend report. These top stories and more on News Channel 8 coming right up. Good evening, I'm Stacey Amos and we're here live at the Hovenza plant where rumors surrounding a possible mid-year closing in 2012 have surfaced. Glenn, do you have any more details about that? I got some information here where they're saying, uh, of course, uh, as you indicated, by middle of this year there might be a close down. Goldman Sachs Group Incorporated, a leading global investment banking, securities and investment management firm, recently predicted the Hess Corporation might close or divest its interest in St. Croix oil refinery by the middle of this year. Hess has integrated energy company with operations in 23 countries completing construction in the refinery in St. Croix since 1967. Hess formed a partnership with Venezuela National Oil Company, uh, Petro Venezuela, since 1998. The refinery then renamed Hovenza, which is among the 10 largest refinery in the world and the second largest in the nation. I spoke to David Rosanowski, he's the corporate head of communications for Hovenza, and he said it's just speculative, and he said uh, Goldman Sachs prediction is just a, like a rating company, this is all speculation and part of Goldman Sachs. He said they do not buy into the speculation. Hess reported a net income of $298 million for the third quarter of 2011 compared with the $1.154 billion for the third quarter of 2010. Hovenza lost hundreds of millions of dollars in a three-year period from 2009 to 2011. Well, that's what's going on, uh, Stacy, and of course, um, you know, we'll, we'll see how that goes. And in other news, we have Elena Christian got a, the Rocket Club got a big boost from Hovenza today. $3,500 donation in a weather station, so Hovenza is still supporting the community. Here's the story. Hovenza has been a partner with us for more than five years. The light, the, um, that state-of-the-art computer lab that you have here, was donated by Hovenza. Our weather station was donated by Hovenza. And for the last couple of years, they've been helping us to hone our skills to participate in Team America Rocketry Challenge. And that's why they're here today to, and one more time, establish the fact that they are partners in education, partners with the Virgin Islands. And so right now, I'm going to uh, turn over to David. I want to say thank you for uh, having us here today. It's really exciting. It's been fun working with Mr. Bullock. He really is inspired, and you inspire him, and you inspire me. I think it's wonderful that there are so many of you sitting here who are interested in, in the Rocketry Club and the math and science that you're dealing with. And Mr. Bullock came to me earlier, uh, late last year, and said that your weather station wasn't working right that we put in previously. So we had some folks from our instrumentation group come out here and look at the weather station because we were going to fix it. Well, we couldn't find the parts for it. So we decided we're going to buy you a new weather station. And that's going to go in here probably this month. All right. But there's a little bit more. If I could get Mr. McGregor and Mr. Bullock to step up here. Um, there's a little bit more involved in it, though, because I understand you guys are going to go back to the team uh, challenge in Virginia, right, this year? Yeah. You compete? Yeah. Well, it takes money to compete by motors and everything. So I wanted to give the Rocketry Club, on behalf of Hovenza, a check for $2,000. Yeah. All right.
Congratulations to Elena Christian's Rocket Club. That is a great donation and generous gift from Hovenza. Now we're going to give you an update on the Senate confirmation hearings regarding the VIPD Commissioner Designee Henry White and Health Commissioner Dr. Mercedes Dellum. I hope what I can bring is, is 30 years of being in, a, in the healthcare field and wanting to work with people and helping to, to continue to improve the health of the, of the territory. I think there's, there's one point that I really want to make to, to everybody is that it's not just me alone, it's the entire Department of Health that's working with you, but we need the community involvement, the legislature, the governor, everybody to improve the health care here. I am confident that my experience and leadership and background will ensure competent, consistent achievement of the mandates of the consent decree. If I'm given the opportunity to serve this community as a police commissioner, I promise an open, accountable, Accessible Police Department. Congratulations to Commissioner Designees Henry White and Dr. Mercedes Dellum. They now go to the full body Senate for full confirmation. We'll be right back. Looking for something fun to do tomorrow? Well, we have a fun day event for you Saturday at Canagata Ballpark. Here's the details. And we are here with the Department of Health and Domestic Violence. We have Annette and Lynn who are going to tell us about fun day happening tomorrow at Canagata Ballpark. Can you guys tell us about it? Oh, yes. It's a spirit-free family fun day sponsored by um, a fund from uh, LEPC, Law Enforcement Planning Commission. And we're going to be out there with a lot of our partners, including um, DVSAC, Domestic Violence, Sexual Assault, and a whole lot of things are going to be happening that day. We're going to be doing an obstacle course for the children. Um, we're going to have a softball game, three-on-three -three basketball shoot, a toddler race. Nice. And information dissemination. So it's going to be really fabulous. And it's alcohol-free. No alcohol on the premises. Okay. okay? So All right. Lynn, why don't you talk about your involvement? Uh, well, like other partners, uh, many of them, uh, the National Guard, uh, the uh, Police Department, Police Cadets, Junior ROTC, many, many partners that are going to be involved with the activities. We're going to be providing information for people. We'll, of course, have giveaways and other things to, uh, that we can uh, show people our appreciation for them coming out and finding out something about our issues. What we're concerned about is healthy families. Mm -hmm. uh, we are concerned about alcohol consumption here in the territory, and we're trying to promote, along with the Department of Health, the reduction of that right. um, because it does impact families severely. Right. Uh, we it's think it's going to be a wonderful day. We're really sorry that it was postponed previously because we were concerned about the rain. Uh, but the main issue was that we wanted the safety of the children so they could participate in the activities. And like uh, Annette has said, there's going to be many activities oh, yeah. for trophies, all family members to trophies, participate in. Dumbbells. So what, how long is this? It's from 11 a.m. to 6 p.m. So and all day. The adults already because we've got some people from legislature and from the fire department who are going to be playing against the youth. So they already say, you old folk, we're going to beat you. So come on out and challenge them. So we have competition, competition against the old people and the young people. Yes. Okay, not old, the very seasoned people. Yes, the mature <laughs> ones. And see, the good part is that the youth are so excited and it's youth oriented. MC is by youth, okay? Yes. The setting up of the tables and stuff like that is all youth oriented because they're at the table. We can't do things for youth without bringing them to the That's table. That's right. They organize a lot of the activities because we know what they like, and we have an arts and craft table. We got a reading circle going on. I mean, and all of our partners are there doing stuff like Grow Place, we didn't see. They're doing the softball. Department of Health, we're doing the um, arts and craft. Um, DBSAC has helped set up and do prizes with the toddler race and stuff like that. Because you know, the earlier you try to start with children, becomes a healthier adult. Yes. A sober youth is a healthy youth. Yes. And we want a healthier community. Let them wait until they get their brains are growing. You give it time to grow, okay? Yes. And, and that's what's important about that. So, so you all will be out. Tell us the time and place again. Okay, it's going to be at D.C. Canagata Ballpark, and inside will be the, um, the, the um, information tables and stuff like that where you get information. Also, I understand it's going to be free testing by Bicare for HIV. Know your status. You should know your status. Okay, and we're going to have health information, mental health information, and stuff like that. So it's going to be cool. <laughs> right. 11 a.m. to 6, D.C. Canagata Ballpark tomorrow. Family fun day. All family. All family. Zero All to 100 family. years old yeah. should come. <laughs> yeah. All right, we're here with Annette and Lynn. Thank you.
We hope to see all of you at Family Fun Day tomorrow at Canagata Ballpark. There's something else fun to do on St. Croix next week. There's so many great things happening. I spoke to Brian Silver about an event. We have more fun stuff to do. Actually, I know we just talked about Fun Day, which is going to happen tomorrow, but we have something even greater happening next Saturday, which is a wonderful musical event. And I'm here with Brian Silver, who is bringing this to St. Croix, and he's going to tell us what's going to be available. So, Brian, talk to us about what the event is. There you go. They're, they're rushing to get tickets for it right now. <laughs> Man, they must have heard they're selling out. <laughs> oh, thanks for having me on, Stacy. Uh, Island Music Journeys, I founded about five years ago, and um, I'm just proud to be able to be part of bringing some of the world's greatest talent here to St. Croix for public performances, as well as doing um, kids' programs for the music kids through yeah. our Kids of Notability music program. Mm -hmm. uh, we're in the process of trying to build a uh, St. Croix's first music academy mm -hmm. here that will uh, appeal to the uh, public school sector and be fully accessible and uh, tuition assistance, if not free assistance, for um, kids that can't afford it. Mm -hmm. But in the meantime, we have Saturday night, January 21st, at the James Savage Center for Performing Arts at Good Hope School. Mm -hmm. I have Mark O'Connor, world acclaimed violinist extraordinaire coming uh, with his hot swing trio all the way from New York. Wonderful. And the uh, show starts at 7.30. Mark is going to be in St. Thomas with the Arts Alive Foundation and Tillett Foundation at uh, Tillett Gardens Friday night at 8 o'clock. Mm -hmm. Tickets there. And I want to support them because this is a collaborative effort in terms of bringing Mark to the U.S. Virgin Islands. This is actually his second trip. Ten years ago he was here. Mm -hmm. And he's, he's very excited about coming back. Um, so Arts Alive at Tillett Gardens Friday night. You can call 776 8566 7768566 and go on their website for information at artsalive uh, .com or the tillitfoundation.org okay. and uh, I want to be supportive and helpful to them we've been working together on this to make it successful for both and how much are tickets tickets in St. Thomas are 35 and um, tickets here uh, are 30 and 15 for students oh. Great, great. And uh, here you can purchase tickets very easily by uh, going online at uh, islandmusicjourneys.com. Okay. Islandmusicjourneys.com. Or calling 718-1111. And uh, you can purchase tickets online, as I said, or Quinn House Galleries in Peter's Rest, Undercover Books in Gallows Bay, and Polly's at the Pier in Frederickstead. This sounds like a wonderful event. Mark O'Connor, next Saturday, the 21st, Good Hope School, from what time? 7.30 start. Doors open at 6.30. So there is no excuse. There is something to do on this beautiful island of St. Croix. And we are out here in our exterior studio right here at Village Mall. This is Stacey Amos for News Channel 8. We're here live at the boardwalk at Yachtless right here at the mill where tonight, Prodigy Block, our very own Jamie cameraman, is going to be playing live. It's a perfect evening to have some great music. Also, Bogle has some great events for you to, have, for you to know about this weekend. We're going to send it to him. Thank you very much, Stacey, and welcome to this week's edition of the Entertainment Report. Of course, you know, it's a Martin Luther King edition of the Entertainment Report. And definitely looking some place to go this weekend. A lot of things are going on on Sunday night, but we know at the Frontline Nightclub, Friday and Saturday nights is also club night. So you can go out there, all your favorite DJs from 103.5, they'll be there spinning tunes, so you could go and check it out. But then on Sunday, because Monday is a holiday, 2 Plus 2 Nightclub, you're going to have Daddy Jones and crew, UMB Soldiers, and also DJ Carl Selectric of MC Bogle, so you can definitely check that one out. And then that same Sunday night, you're looking something to do on a more adult tip, I mean real adult, you know what I'm saying, you can check out down there at Crusaders, as of course the Caribbean Togetherness Group presents to you a special for Martin Luther King, it's a pre-Martin Luther King bashment, and of course you're going to have music by the musical icon DJ Jules, it's just $10 to get you in, so please go on out to the Crusaders nightclub and be a part of this event, and then that same Sunday night, you're looking some place to go, definitely all those lead to the front line, it's all about Two for Sunday, definitely two Coronas for one, and also two Coors Light for one, definitely down there at the front line in Calcahoon. So you got to go and check it out. And stay tuned here 
for much more information um, pertaining to a dance competition happening on February 25th, and it's all about $1,000 will be given away. So please stay tuned. And of course, the music will be provided by DJ Heart Attack down there at the Frontline Nightclub. Well, the questions have been asked around the place. When are we going to get back a nice reggae concert or a nice concert on the whole? Well, definitely, one is in the air and it's going down. Agriculture Fair Weekend, Saturday the 18th of February. It will be brought to you by Sigur Promotion. As we know for now, the main act for this show, of course, all the way from Kingston, Jamaica, is Itana. That's right. Itana, she'll be coming, she'll be headlining this concert along with some other artists. Just make sure you keep it locked right here on WSVI TV Channel 8 because we are your channel when it comes to entertainment. We are the information highway when it comes to entertainment. So definitely the entertainment report will be able to bring more details about these events that's coming here to St. Croix and around the surrounding islands. So whatever you do this weekend, remember it's Martin Luther King weekend. It's a weekend of peace and unity. And if you drink, please just don't drive. Back to you, Stacy. <laughs> Thanks for that report, Bogle. You have a great weekend, too. I hope to see you out. Coming up next, a St. Croix native comes home to pay it forward. We'll have that warm story coming right up tomorrow night, January 14th at 5.30. It's Let's Tango at the Good Hope School at their campus center. A scholarship benefit, cocktails, and a silent auction. Dinner included, live auction at 8 p.m., dancing, all starting at 5.30. This is this Saturday at January 14th at the Good Hope School. Kevin Shepard returns to St. Croix to help out the Boys and Girls Club. Here's the story. Thanks a lot, Stacy. This is Steve Akufo. Thanks for your Sports 4-1 update. And right now, I'm joined by Kevin Tegan Shepard, man. He's no stranger to News Channel 8 Sports. Um, Kevin, welcome back to News Channel 8 Sports. And folks, out there, let the folks out there know you have something new, new development that's going on. You're doing an after-school program for the, for the youngsters. Yeah, um, you know, News 8, thank you for... Welcome me back again for the 2012, and I wish everybody Happy New Year. Um, I'm introducing my after-school programs, uh, bringing all the high school best talent together from Country Day to Central to Educational Complex. Seven day, I even have one kid from um, from what you call a home school. Mm -hmm. And uh, what I'm trying to do basically is just having all the guys coming together, preparing some type of atmosphere so these guys can be in one place, getting to know each other teaching them the game, monitoring the schoolwork, uh, make sure that these guys understand every detail about basketball. And basically, it's been going very well, and um, I'm continue doing great things for the Virgin Islands. Okay, um, th this is a great idea, man. How, how has the funding been? Uh, uh, is you, do you need help with the funding doing this? Well, I must say, funding has been very difficult. Um, uh, you know, I started out with housing, parks, and recreation. Uh, I thank uh, definitely Alan Burke for giving me the opportunity to introduce uh, my program along with uh, uh, Commissioner St. Clair Williams. And, uh, but they ran out of funding, and I reached out for President um, of the Virgin Islands Federation, Senator Richards, and he's been helping me here and there. Uh, it's still not really enough to continue our, um, you know, what I really want to accomplish. So basically, I have a nonprofit organization, Choices Basketball Association, and I'm reaching out to the community, um, you know, all the private communities, so that you can always call me, 642-2857, uh, if you want to give a donation. It's a nonprofit organization. Uh, you have tax write-off, and anybody who wants to give a donation to my organization, because um, we, we can't put our kids last. I mean, this is, this is one thing that I've noticing since I've been back in the Virgin Islands. Uh, I've been listening to all the talk shows, all the news, and the number one thing is uh, about the Alpine and the waste management and everything like that. But everybody's forgetting about the education and the after-school program for the kids. And, and trust me, the kids are listening, you know, and we cannot be putting the kids, you know, playing them down, you know, depressing them, you know, letting these kids know that we don't care because they are watching you. And if we don't have no positive role models for the kids, they will go someplace else. And is 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 no doubt why you've seen so much crimes and killings going on in the Virgin Islands. So I'm not here to complain. I'm here to make a difference and find a solution. And um, Choices Basketball will do all this, all all we can. Okay, Kevin. One one last thing. How are the kids have been, are the kids being receptive to um, the after school program? Well, that's one of the most amazing things 
you know, I currently have about 40, 40 kids right now currently on my schedule. And um, during the, the break, the carnival season, you know, the, the guys been calling me, want to know when we're going to get back in the gym, practicing. Uh, they texted me at night, they're seeing college games and they're seeing some of the teams run our plays. I mean, they're so excited now that they're not just watching the game, they're actually understanding the game. And that's something refreshing for myself, just knowing that, it, it, you know, these guys are seeing what I see. And that's one of the most amazing things about uh, teaching the guys. Once, once they're starting to learn new things, then, you know, if all of a sudden they just, they, they want to learn more. And that's, that's, a, that's a, with all kids. You know, once, once they learn something new, they just want to get more and more and more and more information. And I'm so proud of them. And um, for the guys who are listening, if you're watching any news, you better be watching. We're going to get back to work next week. So let's get it going. Kevin, thanks a lot for joining us here on News Channel Sports. Folks, whatever you can do to help Kevin with his after-school program, please do so. That's a look at your Sports 4-1 update. I'm Stephen Francis. Back to you, Stacy.